Now I want to talk about propositional logic and uh, in particular the satisfiability problem for first order logic. We've talked a lot about theorem proving in, in first order logic because that's what the assignment's about. And we didn't really talk, we talked about doing resolution in propositional logic just to introduce what modus ponens and, and resolution were. But in practice, people don't use resolution much for satisfiability because <coughs> uh, it uses a ton of memory. So instead, um, when you have a question about whether a, a, a KB is satisfiable, people do something called model finding where you try and find a model. So we all know what a model is. So there's a Boolean formula. There's a propositional theory. Who can tell me a model for this formula? B and C and not A. So we have if B is true, then these are true. If C is true, then this is true. And if not A is true, then this is true. So we've got all the clauses satisfied. Absolutely, that's a model. So this formula is satisfiable. Um, now, um, this problem comes up all over the place. I think I mentioned that. We talked about uh, hardware verification at the beginning. We talked about uh, you write down your chip as a Boolean formula. If you can find chunks of it that are not satisfiable, that means they're always false and you can remove them from the design and replace them with false. Um, now, people have uh, been able to compile an amazing number of problems down into Boolean satisfiability. And if you take the algorithms class, you'll see that there's this whole theory of NP-completeness about how you can translate one problem into another. And satisfiability was one of our touchstone problems that lots of things got translated into. So satisfiability is, is a, a key problem. There's been a ton of work on algorithms for determining whether a, a formula is satisfiable. And I'm going to tell you about two of them. Uh, because every AI person needs to know about them because they're super famous. Um, one is this algorithm by uh, Davis and Lojman and Loveland. Um, that we'll talk about. Um, but the problem is that uh, there was a very famous paper that talks about this algorithm that says that Davis and Putnam invented it, which is false. So there are a lot of people that call it the Davis-Putnam algorithm. But it has, Davis and Putnam actually proposed using resolution, which is completely different from what this is. This was, a, this was proposed by Davis and Lojman and Loveland. So I just wrote Davis and Putnam and Lojman and Loveland, just so you've got all the names on there and you can associate them all together. But you guys know that it's actually the DLL algorithm. A lot of people will talk about deep, the DP algorithm or even DPLL, which drives me crazy. But uh, anyway, uh, they, they, treat the, um, they treat the SAT formula as a CSP, <laughs> as a constraint satisfaction problem. Because we, we have a finite number of decision variables. Each one can be either true and false. We want to find a combination so that we don't violate any of these constraints. You can view these clauses. This is in CNF, so it's an and of ors. You can view each of these, these clauses here as a constraint, saying one of these things has to be true. The particular combination where A is false and B is false and C is false are, is disallowed. Right, so that's like a constraint. It's like a you know, map coloring constraint saying these two things can't be the same color. It's saying you know, all these things can't be false together. It can't be that um, A is true and B is false and C is true. That combination is disallowed. Don't you dare even try it. Um, so people treat this as a CSP. What algorithm do we use for solving CSPs? And what? No, alpha beta is for games. Smart, it was close though, close. Forward checking, yeah, the forward checking is a way of reducing the domains as we go along to, so that the, we cut down on the size of the tree. But the basic search strategy is depth first search. So that's what the, that's what the DLL algorithm is. It's a depth first search. So you have your formula. 
And if you have no clauses, then fantastic, all the clauses are true. If there's a clause that has no literals in it, then you are hosed. Um, that means that clause can never be true. So now the whole formula can't be true because the whole formula is an and of all the clauses. Now, here's the, the uh, forward checking part of it. Um, it's called unit propagation. If alpha contains a clause that has only a single literal in it, like A or not A or something like that, it looks a single literal called a unit clause because it's got one literal, um, then simplify the formula using that literal. And to simplify the formula says, okay, well, we know the clause has to be true, so we know exactly what value to give that variable. Right? If the clause is just like A, then we know A has to be true. So every place where that literal occurs positively, we've now satisfied that clause. We're going we're to say that A is true, and we're going we're to remove all those clauses where A is, appears positively. Or, or sorry, where the literal appears positively. In all the clauses where the literal is, appears negatively, we know that literal can never make the clause true. So remove it from the formula. So just going back to the example here, if we set, uh, let's say this were a unit clause containing just A. Right, then we would, this would be a unit clause, and the first thing that um, the, the, the DPLL procedure would do is set A to be true. And that means we can remove this literal from the clause here because A is never going to be false, so the this is never going to make the, the clause true. So we can shorten this clause, we can shorten that clause, and we can shorten that clause. So we've simplified the formula, we made it smaller. Okay, so uh, where were we here? Okay, and now, so now we've simply, oh, I forgot a uh, backslash. Um, so now we have our new formula. So, and we called DPLL on it. After we've done, if, if there are no unit clauses, then we have to actually branch on a variable. So we pick some variable, and first we set it to be true, and then we set it to be false. I mean, we try the setting it to true and see if that works. If so, we're done. If it doesn't work, then we set it to false and see what happens. So this is just chronological backtracking with constraint propagation, just like we have from CSPs. It's a beautiful algorithm. It, it processes the formula, chunking it down um, by simplifying it. Makes a lot of sense. People under, have a, have a, people understand how this algorithm works?